where do you draw the line between magic and science? We're shooting basically two documentaries. One is about you and your chemistry presentations. Thing. The other one is about the documentary, it's about field production. Yeah, this is the greatest. How do you feel about this? Yeah. Okay, so we got Salim checked out on the wireless microphone. Now, do we have a key light on Salim? Yeah, we really need more light. When you're shooting out in the field and you have unusual lighting yeah. that you can't control, oh, white balance. White balance. Yeah. Go through the motions of white balance. It doesn't matter. I think the camera angle is good if he's standing, but if he's sitting, notice how you're looking down on him with the camera? Yeah, this will be probably easier. I think the camera's got to be lower in angle so it doesn't diminish him too much. The whole thing is about the unexpected. Just when you think, you think something is going to happen, something else will happen. Rolling. And... Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Professor Diab, Professor of Chemistry. And I'm here to kind of dazzle you with what we call the unexpected. Think about it for a minute. I'm going to take a balloon and just blow it. Ah, oh, by the way, it doesn't have to be red. And I am sure you know, just about everyone knows, that if I tie it up, it's going to stay blown. Real balloon. And if I take one of those skewers, quite sharp, what do you think would happen if I just puncture it? Y you know what's going to happen, right? Well, let's do that. Ah, I call that the expected. Well, let's do another balloon. I'm going to do a white one. If you can. Guess what I'm going to do? Let me know, by the way. And I think some of you will. Some of you will say, okay, Dr. Diab, can you insert that skewer through the balloon without popping it? Some of you will be so skeptical, they say no. Well, I say yes. Hocus pocus, hocus pocus, hocus pocus. I have to do this. Let's try, let's try. It might fail, science fails once in a while. Oh, I got one in. See if I can get it through the other side. Oh boy. Oh. I need you to clap for me if I do it. Cool. I call that the unexpected, ladies and gentlemen. The unexpected. Uh, why? Well, I'll let you think about it and maybe we'll explain it later on. And I'll come back to it. I'll call it the magic of science. Because quite often, you know, we distinguish science from magic. Science has a little drier sense to it. You know, you start with a hypothesis, then you go out and collect some data, and then you make observations, you go to the laboratory, do some testing, and create theories because Karl Popper said when we create theories we'd have to fi find a way of punching holes in them. Punching holes in theories therefore we can modify them. Well that's what science is. Well is that magical? Is this really what magic is? If you look at that, the way we entertain people, we entertain them using scientific inquiry in many ways to entertain them and then have them mesmerize them with the fact that it could not happen. How can you insert a, a skewer inside this balloon today without popping it? So it becomes a question of where do you draw the line? And that's for us to decide between magic and science. Let's do something really cool for you. I have a container, just glass. I have a little tube. I'm going to take the tube dip the tube in a liquid water that has color to it. Look at the color. Take some out and you can see the liquid is on the tip of this little tubing. Seal it. 
you can see the liquid still in the tubing. I'm going to just hold this gently and watch it. Do you see the liquid rising in the tube? I'm going to let it spill anyway. It's just water. Food coloring. What is going on here? Am I to press hard? A lot of people say, oh, press hard. Well, let's try it again. Do you think I might be influencing the liquid because of important concepts in science? Of course, if I can capture the minds of the students, which was the key behind my success as a professor here for years. For 36 uh, years. And I'm a very good professor. I'm very proud of it and maybe arrogant about it. But I, am, I can take complex ideas like quantum chemistry, organic chemistry, and make it interesting. Let's try it again. I'm just going to let it sit here for a second without my hands and see if it happens. The expected versus the unexpected. I think I will be sitting here forever without the water going up. Unless I do one thing. My hands are warm, or they should be, warmer than this room by at least 25 degrees. It heats the glass, which is a solid. The glass heats the air inside the flask. The air expands because of the heat. It creates pressure that pushes on the liquid. The liquid is under pressure now, it moves. Well, let's try it. Let's try one hand versus two. It's going to be a little slower because one hand is less influenced than two. Watch the slow, it's barely moving. Watch what happens when I put my second hand. That baby is rising like crazy. That is the pressure, temperature on a solid liquid and a gas. Cool. I want that from the kids, from my students who are in medical school right now, in pharmacy school. I want them to walk away saying that I learned one thing today that I didn't know about. That I can explain what I learned. That I can articulate what I learned today. See, I shy away from memory. In many ways, science is memorizing facts. And that's what people think it is. Well, you know what? I dismantled that myth. I demystified that argument that science is a memory bank, a series of events, associations, and, and just simply uh, a bunch of numbers and, and symbols. Oh no, it's logical. If we approach it like I would, conceptually with approach of logic, it becomes a storytelling, a story that unfolds and demystifies itself in front of you. The case of the balloon, that never popped and stayed inflated is because as I created a hole in the soft spot in it, the leakage was completely sealed by the elasticity of the tubing. So pressure again, surface tension, temperature and pressure. Let's see if we can do one more for you here. I have a liquid here, it's an acid, vinegar. Inside this balloon, I have something called sodium bicarbonate, which is something you know at home called baking soda. So if I let those amounts of baking soda drop into the liquid, well, let's see what we find out. I think little kids enjoy that so tremendously. We have to be kind of innocent and kiddish when we watch all these things. Some gas is being produced, obviously carbon dioxide, very safe gas, and it's reacting within the jar. You can see the bubbling effect, and you can see the balloon being blown up, and I think it continues until all the CO2 or gas evolves. I think that's cool. Give me, give me a big hand. Yes, it seems entertaining. It seems entertaining, but, and why not? Could entertaining be educational? And the answer is yes. 
if you're careful where to draw the line. Oh, let's pause for a minute and look at this sheet of paper. When you do forensics, you create latent fingerprint. Well, there's something on this sheet that you don't really see, but if I take a little bit of this, we'll call it a chemical, and just spray it. If I open it, that would help. If I open it, that would truly help. And I'm having trouble. As science will. Okay. Well, I think my pump is. Oh, it's working. You saw that? It's working. <sighs> Let me go back to where I started, please. There's nothing here, or you think there is nothing there, but there is. Just for you, a square head. Hi, square heads.